Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. I decided to make the plenum in the SCA Aquarium. Uh, this is the substrate I use, the Fluval Stratum. You could use any substrate you want. Uh, the best size would be anywhere between 1 to 3 millimeters in size. If you have a substrate like this, the, the Fluval is the kind I bought. Uh, whether you like it or not, it's just totally up to you. But you can use anything you want. It's the idea of the plenum is basically these plates are to get the substrate off the ground so you have movement through the substrate and you have a void underneath it. And that is what helps keep water movement going through the substrate. And of course I had some old API first layer pure laterite. These are old boxes. This is all I had left. And I used that in the aquarium. Laterite can still be bought today. It is uh, readily available. So I really don't understand why people cannot buy it. Here's a brand new box of it that you can buy off the internet. So the first thing I did is I put down that uh, Eheim added substrate. This you get with your canister filters when you buy Eheim complete. And this is the stuff that they give you that you're supposed to add to your canister filters. I had a lot of it, so I put a thin layer and kept it away from the sides for the center. And this will help grow bacteria on it, but not make a new layer, thick layer, and then I place the uh, plenum or the under gravel plates that I bought over it. Remember these plates are over an inch high so there's plenty of room where I can place them on top and there's still going to be a big void underneath there. Then I put about uh, two bags of the fluvo down on top of the plates. I didn't use a mesh or anything because if a little bit of dust gets down there in the plenum, it's not going to hurt anything. Okay. And I placed it on the sides to make it look like it goes, you know, it, the under gravel is a little smaller. So it looks like it's, it's a complete thick gravel bed or substrate bed, but really it, it isn't. It's, it's an illusion. But anyhow, after that, I put two of the bags down. I had four bags. I put two boxes of the laterite down and I sprinkled it on top. You don't have to get it all over the sides or anything just because I didn't want to see it poking out from the side. So I sprinkled it on the top and a lot of people are asking me, can I use something else? Yeah, you can use something else if it's high in iron to do the same thing. Uh, there are other fluval products that have a lot of iron. You could add that, a little bit of that. And then, after you add that, do what I do. Then I add the other two bags of my uh, fluval medium on top of that. Because I had four bags, my stratum. Like I said, at this point, if you don't want to use stratum, you can use something else. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. A plenum is just the fact that you are making a void underneath the substrate of your choosing. You don't have to use kitty litter or oil dry or any of the other products that are out there because you're designing a functioning filter that uh, will benefit all bacteria that's going to live there. Just like this uh, Eheim particular stuff. It looks like it's a pumice, but underneath there, because the water is going to be moving so slow and it's void of oxygen or very low oxygen, we don't want to void it of oxygen. We want it to be very low in oxygen. So heterotrophic, facultative, anaerobic bacteria grows. And that's the bacteria that's also going to take care of your nitrates and your phosphates, help bring them down. And a lot of people say, well, there's not much wrong with the nitrates, but nitrates do affect some aquatic plants, that they do not like the nitrates. But anyway, 
once everything's done and I have all my fluval stratum down, then I topped it off with this uh, aquarium gravel that I had. This is very old gravel. I had it. I moved it when I moved to Florida. Might as well use it. It's sitting in a bucket. So as you can see, there's about maybe a half inch of that. And the complete substrate is actually only where between three and a half to four inches. The other inch is just an illusion because that's where the plenum is. And the gravel was set there so plants would not come up out of the substrate, which people complained about. The substrate is uh, so light that the, it's hard to push a rooted plant in there and have it stay. Now this is what I did with the air holes. As you can see, it's on the wear. It's on the side of the wear. And that's going to the bubbler, the little half inch bubbler. Now this is a 36 inch aquarium. If you were going to have a six foot aquarium, you could put two bubblers if you want. One on one side, one on the other side. 36 inches with this little half inch bubbler, that's more than enough. It, it will move more than enough water through the aquarium bottom to do what you're supposed to do without agitating the water. And the good thing about it, you can put it on a timer. Let's say if you had this in a bedroom, you can have it shut down at night while you're asleep so you don't hear the bubbles. Then as you get up, it could turn back on. You don't need the bubbles 24-7. If this was in a family room and you were using air instead of some other means, you can have it shut down at certain times and turn on at certain times. This is just a convenience for the hobbyists that you're running the slow-moving plenum like this. It's not designed to move water quickly through it. The cabinetry is completely done. As you can see, they're sealed to. There's uh, the aquarium air pump I'm using is a Tetra. I think it's designed for 10 to 30 gallons. It's really too strong. I have to bleed off some of the air. You should even get a smaller Tetra than even this one. The shelves that I put in for the kitchen cabinet, they're working out great. Absolutely wonderful. Just uh, no problem at all. The ADA canister filter, the motor does run a little hot, I notice, but it seems to have enough torque, no problems at all. Another thing, too, is which I didn't bring up, if you have a canister filter and you could connect it up to a wear, it will automatically prime itself. So you don't any longer have to do pumps. You don't have to pre-fill your canister. You take it over there, you hook up your canister, okay, and because you're using a wear and your intake is at the very bottom, gravity itself, as soon as you open up the valves, is going to force that water into the canister and push out any air that's in there out of the top. And that's something I forgot to tell you, that if you do make an aquarium like this, you don't have to prime your uh, canister filter. That's a big canister filter. I didn't have to prime it. It immediately primed itself. The intake hose is uh, green and the exit holes is clear and within a minute that whole canister as big as it is was already primed all i had to do is fire it up no work at all then i can disconnect it with the quick disconnects i'm using from eheim and i can empty it before i move it i can slide the whole cabinet drawer out empty it or empty some of it and then carry it off to the sink to clean it because it, it's a it's going to be heavy but a lot of people think you can't use a wear with a canister filter and yes you can inside here I have the autofill on the left hand side you see the silver tube that's the water comes out on the right hand side is the float switch I will get into a review on this this is a Tunzi one uh, but as you can see, it's very easy to hook up. And you can buy the U, uh, the U-Ben stainless steel tube there off uh, Amazon. And it hooks right over the side. And I'm also using another U-Ben tube on your right-hand side. And that goes to down to the uh, uh, your 
stone for your, your ceramic stone for your uh, seal two, and that will be on the right hand side, and the left hand side has the airline tubing for, of course, your plenum that you're using. But as you see, it's it's not a lot of bubbles. It's not really that noisy if you're worried about that. This is a little six inch. It works out great. Uh, cosmetically, I think it looks good. Like I said, you could put on a timer so it doesn't bother you if it's in a bedroom or in a family room or something, and then you can have a go when nobody's in there. But uh, it does work out quite nicely. The bubbler, when I hooked it up, here's what it's bubbling. So that's how much water the bubbler is actually pulling out of the bottom. Not a lot. But just enough for the, and that, and that, remember, this is for a 24 by 36 inch aquarium. That's not pulling a lot of water through that plenum. But it's still going to stop you from having anaerobic conditions. Because plants cannot grow in anaerobic conditions. They need oxygen. Someone mentioned that uh, plant roots create create anaerobic conditions around the roots. That is false. Don't believe in that. Plants cannot grow if they're in anaerobic conditions. They have to have oxygen around their roots. Otherwise, their roots would turn black. Another thing is, as you see the Amazon sword in the center, the Amazon, it's a sword plant. It's not an Amazon sword, sorry. Uh, the sword plant that's in the middle. I had no problems planting it. That is going to grow a very vast root system along with crip. And you have to remember that crips, when they take in nitrogen, crips, they cannot utilize that nitrogen because they haven't learned how to utilize that nitrogen when a crip takes a nitrogen. They will still take it in, but they haven't learned how to utilize it. In other words, like other plants have learned how to take nitrogen in as a food source, then they break it down to nitrites, and then they break, and then they turn it into ammonia, and they use the ammonia because it's easier uptake. It's 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 something that takes less work. When you make them work to take nitrogen, don't forget that's only during peak photosynthesis that they can take nitrogen in to the plant and then break it down. Once photosynthesis stop. The nitrogen cycle of them taking in nitrogen as a food source also stops. Therefore, that's why you are building this plenum is to help with your nitrates and phosphates to help bring them down, to lessen them because your crypts, if they keep taking in nitrogen and keep taking more nitrogen in, they will soon get what they call crip rot because they can't utilize the nitrogen they took in. They have no way of doing that. They, they don't, haven't learned how. So that's something to remember. That is the reason you are building a plenum and a tank like this, is to help bring nitrates and phosphates down to zero levels or very low levels. It may not even be zero. maybe less than five parts per million, which is great. And this helps people out so their aquarium plants definitely can benefit from that. So you're not subject to certi certain plants only. Get what I'm saying? You're, only, you're subject to every plant now using this method. And the water is not flowing so fast that it will wind up hindering any of your plant growth. So I hope this helps you. It looks very thick. Yeah, it is thick. But if you ever grow plants this way, you are going to get massive root system and that's what you want that's why i made it thicker plus i still have 18 inches of growing space above the substrate so it doesn't matter to me so this is dr novak i hope this has helped you and till next time uh, happy aquarium keeping